Hello, welcome to Industry Reactions. Industry Reactions is a weekly briefing on industry events, changes, and future trends that impact your business. We're your hosts, Rick Honer and Mark Friedel from Kempoint. You can find Industry Reactions on YouTube, LinkedIn, and as a podcast. For those watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and smash that like button. We plan on discussing issues that impact the global industry and help you uncover new opportunities. We hope this will provide market intelligence that will keep you ahead of changing conditions. All right, and in this week's first story, it's not really uh, current events necessarily, but it's a report that the American Chemistry Council recently put out, uh, I think it was towards the end of June here, regarding US chemical trade and really the, tr- the, the trade surplus. Uh, so the story that they put out um, and an infographic that went along with with it talked about U.S. chemical exports. And in 2020, it was roughly 125 billion, pretty significant, wow. which represented 9.2 percent of all U.S. goods exported. Uh, the two main countries that those exports were going to were the uh, uh, Canada and Mexico. No surprise there. And about half of it was uh, products that were derived from petrochemicals. Wow. So you've seen uh, probably supplies going down from uh, probably out of uh, Asia and the U.S. making up for some of that gap. Yeah, no doubt. Pretty significant. Hmm. Interesting to look at. All right. So taking a peek at North American chemical rail car traffic. It actually rose for the 19th straight time uh, through the first week of August. Um, And when you take a look at the the data, while shipments for most of the rail car categories rose year over year, there were some pretty sharp declines. One was for grain and the other was for motor vehicles and parts, both down around 24% year over year. And I know the story on motor vehicles. I think the... um, uh the semiconductor shortage is causing that one i'm not 100 percent sure of the grain um if there was um either a lower yield or what's driving that yeah i think there was a, a report that came out uh just recently in the last few days about the july auto numbers and yeah um they're definitely down for the third month in a row and they were already at somewhat reduced levels and it is all going back to the the semiconductor and the chip and it doesn't seem like things are going to get better anytime soon here in the for the automotive industry yeah and then you know on the other side of that uh uh interesting story was the used car vehicles the price has escalated so much it's it's a big portion of the cpi inflation index which is just crazy to me yeah great point even think about that um And moving on to oil and gas, OPEC uh, recently put out their uh, monthly oil market report. I believe it was for the month of July. And there, you know, despite people rising, raising expectations for GDP for the second half of 2021, OPEC is basically saying that they're not going to necessarily play a part in that uh, because a lot of the rally is expected to be in other sectors or industries that are non-oil intensive um yeah so certain certain markets or industries um will outperform they also mentioned that in q1 a lot of the growth came from countries outside of oecd um, where the oecd countries were maybe a little bit weaker than expected Hmm. so not not expecting to see um large crude demand. I think in a similar story, um, when you look at crude inventories, there's been a pretty modest decline in overall inventories. It continues to go down. Um, Last week, it showed another 450,000 barrels taken out of total inventory. But in comparison, the the total inventory amount is is about 440 million barrels. So 450,000 isn't all that much uh, when you look at the the bigger picture. And when you compare that to the five-year average, um, the the inventory is down. It's down around 6% from that five-year average. Yeah, and continuing on with uh, stories in oil and gas, uh, the rig count 
uh, came in uh, this past week and it was over 500 or no, sorry, right at 500. So continue to see increases in that that metric. I think there was nine rigs that were added this past week, and this is significantly higher than where we were a year ago. Obviously, it bottomed out um, during the uh, height of the pandemic lockdowns where it was uh, at 244 rigs. So, um, you know, oil and gas is definitely bouncing back, especially in the U.S. Um, yeah, seems to be good. I know that's an industry that uh, areas, you know, the Gulf Coast are really happy to see that uh, the oil prices back up and demand coming back. All right, so in company announcements, uh, we have SI Group, a company that we know well. Um, they've announced that they're expanding capacity um, for their Rezzel resin factories. They're located, one's in New York and one in India. Um, but they're slated for expansion. Uh, they're expected the capacity to grow by 25%, and that um, capacity expansion is supposed to be in place uh, by the end of the year. At the end of the day, I think uh, these resins are used pretty heavily in uh, automotive and adhesive. I know the, uh, the resins go specifically into rubber for tires. Yeah, good to see companies starting to make some expansions. We saw a story a few weeks ago about Dow doing something similar, uh, different products, different market, but good to see people looking at how to debottle that quickly to free up some uh, capacity. All right, and in our next story, it's in regards to Enios and their sulfur chemicals business. Uh, they have announced the completion of the sale of this business. Uh, which is a sulfuric acid and oleum facility, I believe in northern Spain. They're selling this to International Chemical Investors Group. Uh, they're an a investment firm with a portfolio of companies in the industry. And it's gonna, they're going to fold this into Whale Chem, one of their businesses, who already plays into this market. They, they have an existing facility, I believe it's in northern France, where they produce sulfuric acid and oleum. So it looks like it's going to be a nice uh, bolt-on acquisition for whale chem. Yeah, it looks like pretty seamless. I mean, they're making basically the same products. So exactly. pretty easy decision. All right. And Mark, did you know that there's a flurry of acquisition in major meat sectors? I didn't know <laughs> That's that. That's the next story. <laughs> Me, well, me either. Um, so the, the latest move actually in, in that sector, um, there's some, some giants within the food space. So Cargill and Continental Grain Company are pairing up and they're looking to buy Sanderson Farms, who's a very large chicken producer. The deal is valued at four and a half billion dollars, that's with a B in US dollars, and ultimately will expand Cargill's poultry operations into the US. Um, one of the questions I had when I seen this, you know, the consolidation, I, I wonder if it, how much of it has to do with some of the changes in, in veggie based products, et cetera, in the space, or if it's just this made sense and so it was time to do it. Yeah, for sure. Makes a lot of sense. All right. And before we conclude, we wanted to um, address a question that we had asked in last week's uh, industry reactions. Uh, podcast and the question was regarding Lanxis. They had made an acquisition that had closed uh, last week, or I can't remember if it closed or announced, um, but it was their second largest acquisition. And the question that we threw out to uh, those who were listening was, what was the largest acquisition that Lanxis made? And the correct answer came from Chris Ubekwe in the Netherlands. And the answer was the Chemtura acquisition probably about 10 years ago or so, if I recall correctly. Congratulations, Chris. Yeah, congratulations. That was a tough one. All right, and that's it for this week's edition of Industry Reactions. We will return next week with a fresh batch of Industry Reactions. Till then, stay safe. Take care. <laughs>